the RCM in Martinez. We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Of course. Where to? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. The harbor gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. What do you mean? We're in Martinez, sir. This intersection is called Roundabout North, I think. Oh, that. That's right there, in the yard. She's relieved someone has come for it, finally. No problem. Excuse me? She's uncomfortable. Maybe... Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. Okay. Me? I am just a gardener. I am working. I have a greenhouse in the yard there. I've been trying to get some work done. There's discomfort. She stops mid-sentence. As you already know, there's a corpse there, hanging from a tree. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Don't worry, miss. We are here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. It's the jam, my man. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, and all around clusterfuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo. For days upon days upon days. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. Mazout is an antiquated term for heavy fuel oils. This man has a barely suppressed performative streak. Or he just likes unusual words. Or both. <laughs> yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in or out. Some pretty wild stuff I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, yes. From the White Lions. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. 
They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. Pa-ching. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Time to arrest him. Relax. He's merely joking. Can't even get a few jokes past you, my man. I've got another haul of foul cargo. Mostly sporting goods, tracksuits, and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. This rockin' beauty. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6. Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. There it is again. A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he spent too long in this lorry. Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. In his eyes, an our familiar longing, flecks of brown and gold. It's hard to say, his gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. Excuse me? Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know? I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of La Caillou, pretty much, on another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. I can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? Is that what it is? This feeling? I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. Missing like that doesn't feel like it has much of an upside. But, thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone, and I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. He ain't one of us drivers, I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Ask for his conclusion. A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Don't be a stranger. The 
the worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. This Postler Vantorier mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. The box seems happy. Eat shit pig, fucked by the coon, and sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. The mail collection box seems cathartic, thankful even. So do you. You shudder. Then you swallow. Sir, step right in. The store is open. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside minding the register or organising the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance and biographies of famous people. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counters. She covers her face, smiling. But she's cold. of you to offer, sir. What could you do to help her anyway? Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides, I have some hot juice in my vacuum bottle to keep warm. I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second, and some kind of doubt in her tense shoulders. Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more to look into here. Yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. No such thing. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead.
Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. But it does make the famous people more famous. Why would they do that, sir? That's so cool. Maybe they'll make you a book cover picture and everything. Standing over a dead body, holding a gun. Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. It's exciting to people, I guess. They get to imagine dangerous things. And it's kind of like a puzzle where you can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. You don't look much like a policeman. Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Head, yes. No, it's your soul. Your blue soul. Not head, child. Heads. Isn't that very dangerous? Unlike you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? What do you mean, sir? She knows where this is going. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. A facade of true professionalism. He is far more intrigued by the situation than his poise reveals. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. It was okay, sir. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You're quite sober. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. I sure hope you are, sir. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar. There's something you're missing.
you have absolutely no idea. Familiar? How? You must have forgotten something you heard again. It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Like during the revolution or something. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people, and everyone is happy in the end. I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask Mum. I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. Um, no, I don't know. Yes, she knows books, definitely. What was that? An idea for an unfinished novel stuck somewhere in your forebrain? You clearly have issues you need to address. Maybe some about other books? This trash container is locked. The sliding lid has a padlock that says, whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They lock these containers to keep the derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence too. What do you mean, feel? I agree. We should get someone from the remote viewers division here. He's being sarcastic. Do not ask what the remote viewers division is. Oh, it might also be evident. The mob could have disposed of something in there. We should get it open. We could try using a pry bar. Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rags. He probably has one. He might also have information. This is better than the pry bar idea. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to 12 pairs have walked here. Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Maybe more than 12. No, eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. One, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 46. Two, standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Three, hobnailed work boot, Steel reinforced toes, number 43.
4. Standard work boot. Number 45 or 46. You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. 5. Another standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. 6. An aberration. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot, but number 41. Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. You're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it. And the tracks burn in the middle of it, in a strange, beautiful way. 7. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. 8. And yet another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. How many? I was pretty off then. I counted 20. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? A woman or a kid? Okay. How do you know? He knows it's hard to discern sex from a person's gait. Understood. Anything else? Two hundred? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon to be dead man. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Possibly, yes. But why? Yes, they could have used a makeshift stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. Even easier to carry on a stretcher or between two men. Anyway, it's for future consideration. What a 200... He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is... Possibly. But why? Yes, Dick, you have a point there. Anyway, it's something to consider. What else can you see? Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? He regrets it the moment he says it. A drummer only uses their right foot for the kick drum. You're right, it's stupid. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Mm -hmm. A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashal. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed, they all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. Yes, everything fits so well. Carried him over, hoisted him up, watched him hang. This is easy. Isn't it strange to have your assumptions confirmed like this? This is what someone whispering suggestions in your ear would like you to feel. The lieutenant is saying something, but you can't hear it. Suddenly, it seems like your tie is alive again, whispering, no, screaming into your ear. What? With Howard being content? What are you, mild to moderately disabled? That doesn't feel like something you should do. Live a little, 
Everything on the damn crime scene fits like a glove. You should get shit-faced on this damn crime scene. Shut up, fuck midget! I have no idea what's going on here, but you should not do anything that the horrific necktie tells you to do. Um, detective? The lieutenant looks at you curiously. A beat passes in silence. The wind blowing, the cargo belt squeaking. The lieutenant doesn't understand what's happening right now. You're twisting at your tie, looking sweaty even by your standards. He needs to say something. I agree. <clears throat> Our assumptions could be wrong. Better not to have them confirmed just yet. Do you see anything else? An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Glad you asked. When junior researcher Olari Tal invented Etonite in the Vatna Polytechnic Institute some 30 odd years ago, he thought it would last forever. Hence the name Etonite. Sadly, the only lasting thing turned out to be the material's highly carcinogenic effect. Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. There it is. You see a shabby little door. What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However, see that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use. Yes? What do you want to know? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, a pissing competition. His disdain is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. You don't know? I assumed you were in on it. Better still than an imbecilic cup of. It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Later. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? Maybe you can tell me what you do know to help me narrow it down a bit. Then you are not that far behind, actually. Do you want me to brief you? 
Three days ago, the RCM emergencies desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling in Rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. A security guard or worker of some sort hired by Wild Pines. This was just hearsay for Martinez, of course. We need to find out the truth. They didn't identify themselves in any way. The tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. There is a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The dock workers' union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. That's us, the Revachol Citizens Militia. We're the police in this city. The RCM or the Revachol Citizen Militia is the police force you and M are part of. A self-organized peace corps of the occupied city of Revachol. The RCM operates within a legal twilight, yet its authority is rarely questioned. It's super useful to know this. Just to be clear, we are police officers. It's our job to find a killer. That's the case. Uncover and arrest the killer. Good. Me? I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul, so was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. Seoul is a protectionist, isolationist, pan isolary state west of the Insulindian Isola. Actually, it's quite interesting. Some would even say mysterious. You're barking at the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seoul. I'm a regular Reva Chaudière. A point of pride to him. No. Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. The eyebrow is exercising psionic control over you. Something the matter, detective? This guy's got authority off the charts. With just the flick of his eyebrow, he's able to make you his thrall. Nothing. You better hope he doesn't abuse his authority. There's a lot of it. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control of yourself. What do you mean? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. The lieutenant is a police officer of the old school. His concerns are material and extrinsic. But this isn't an old school case. What? Think? I do most of my work inside my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. That's where his conversations with himself take place. We all have our different mediums. His is written. That's correct. 
You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this, but you can't quite muster enough testosterone. Are they? They're mostly just cumbersome. You could use a good, normal peer yourself. Good. Let's change the subject. shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? Murder was the case, was the case they gave me. I'll die before I squeal, pig. You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the fence. Kuno's got this. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. in the dick. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Fuck that! Kuno, yeah! Right in the mouth hole! They pay you no heed or pretend not to notice you. Shit himself. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. Irregular speech patterns, overconfidence. Could this kid be on drugs? This warrants further investigation into this. Could shitload pig? What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not. I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. The usual being, have you seen anything out of the ordinary? Or have you seen anything suspicious? Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno's not a snitch, that's all. Trying to make the Kuno sing into the popo phone. Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Ramachal. Kuno wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking... Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been. You haven't been in Kuno's head. You wanna know where Kuno was? You wanna know what Kuno's been fucking up to? I don't tell him that, Kuno. It's lame. It's not fucking lame. Kuno's building Kuno City. Night City. Rage City. The City of Rage. That's it. And it's not lame. Lame. That's the name of Kuno City, bitch. Get the fuck off Kuno's back. This shit ain't about that. It's impossible to deduce what it is about, at least for the moment. If it's important, it'll come up later. Focus on the case. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost, f Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. Fuck you, don't know. 
Keep that scar. No used to work there. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Opagite descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Opagites of Ilmara. Not Look, Kuro doesn't explain shit. Kuro just says shit. Yeah, her. What was she doing in the greenhouse in March anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? Fish is sometimes used to fertilize the soil a few weeks before planting something. Maybe she was preparing the garden beds. Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. Don't be wondering about Kuno's shit, pig. Fuck does Kuno care about your hunch? That's your shit. You figured it out. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? You can use them. Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's going to use it against you, Kuno. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Yeah, to the both of you, watch your ass in Kuno's town, or Kuno's gonna fuck your head off. Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the ducky boys his gimps? Just gotta fly, pig. Not for you, pig. Kuno can't wait to see you get all scared and shit your pants. Kuno can't wait to see you shit your fat pants! Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Kuno's Kuno, pig? It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective as a shield. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that fuck shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. The boy knows he has an addictive personality. Admirable insight for his age. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's going to put his hands on you! Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! Yeah? Get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. Don't listen. Just go. 